What's going on everybody? Welcome to the video. My name is Max McDesmus, or Matt, whatever you want to call me. Today I'm going to bring you a Diamond Dynasty video on MLB The Show 21. And these are guys who basically, they're, I mean, I mean, I think I have two gold players, but they're players who are pretty cheap on the marketplace right now, but by the next time the roster update comes around, their overall is going to get buffed and they're probably be a little more expensive, so you can either gain stubs or get better players. One of each. Maybe even both. I'm not sure. But I have a list of approximately, I'd say, 15 guys, maybe less, depending on if I decide to cut some guys off the list, of just people you could get profit on, or just overall better players. So, so yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so I have Giancarlo Stanton as the first one, and make it quick, he's on an 11 game hit streak right now, which is, he's doing really well as of late, he's on fire in the MLB, and he's an 83 already, and yeah, as you can see, his price is pretty expensive now, and I think by the time the next roster update comes around, without a doubt, it'll probably be a diamond, I feel like that's a safe bet for anybody, he, he is just, he's batting over 300 right now, he's, oh, he's, he's just doing really well. And I think it's a safe bet. Even if you want, it's, it's a lot of money to spend right now. And he might only be an 85. So I don't know how much money you'll make. You do three, three thousand stubs, three thousand stubs. I don't know. But I feel like if you want to spend that kind of stubs, you might make profit, or you might just get a diamond player by the time the next roster update comes around. For our second and last gold player on this list, I didn't want to include too many, but we probably found more. Uh, I have Shohei Otani, and I understand he is expensive right now. I do understand that. But I feel like if he keeps hitting the way he is and he keeps pitching, having quality starts, he's going to be a diamond. Soon. I feel like that. So I, I have one personally. I bought one. Just I, It's kind of expensive, but I bought one just to have in like my inventory. In case he does become a diamond, I can just slot him in and use him for over. So like, I even use him for fun in like Conquest when I'm doing the first inning or second inning. So I'm second inning program too. When I do the Conquest for those, I usually just use him for fun. But, I feel like he'll shoot up, and when he becomes a diamond, I think he'll be much more expensive. So if you want to make the investment, you take a chance. I would do that, but I already did it, to be honest. But I would take a chance. A little sidebar, Stan and Otani are the only two on this list who I feel are kind of popular names. The other guys are under the radar, except for one that just happened a few days ago. That's the outlier. You'll find out who it is. Probably the next guy. But I can't believe that happened. You'll you'll find out why. I'm just, I, I can't even. But I don't even know what to say. But Otani and Stanton are the two obvious ones. Just putting that out there. Only golds, too. I think I said that. Alright, so for the next player, I have John Means from the Orioles, who not may, many of you would have known if when I originally made this video on May 1st. Only a few of you. But of course, a few days later, he gets a no hitter, and now everybody knows who he is, and his price went up a thousand, as you can see. It used to be like 300, I swear to God. That's what I, where I bought it at originally. But of course, right when I'm about to make this video, he throws a no-hitter. Pr pretty much a perfect game if he had a, a catcher behind him that didn't make an error on a strikeout, nonetheless. But he, he's going to get buffed no matter what in the run next roster update, I think. That's why everybody's buying him. That's why he's so expensive right now. So I would definitely, if you have a thousand stubs, which I'm going to guess you probably do at the stage of the game if you've had it for at least a week or so. I would buy this guy because I really think he's going to be gold at least next roster update. There's no way he, they keep him in the silver, I, I feel. I think it's a safe bet just to buy him for 1000 and maybe make 2000 depending on 2000 stubs around, depending on how much he gets off soon or next. But yeah, I definitely think you can make at least some stubs off just spending 1100 right now, getting a few hundred and whatnot on about the next roster update. Okay, next I have Tim Locastro, and this isn't really like, a, I guess like a... I guess you can call it a prospect kind of thing, where it's like, you buy him now, you get more later. It's more or less, he has a 99 speed, 99 stealing, and with Bu uh, Byron Buxton and Trey Turner both becoming diamonds in the recent roster update, if you need a guy fast, not necessarily to hit, just have him on the bench for like extra innings, place him on second. This is one of the only guys I think has 99, 99, besides those two. So I would buy him, he's less than 200 stubs, and maybe his price goes up, it's not even for that. It's just like, keep him on your bench. Don't even use him as a pinch hitter. He's a pinch runner only. He has a decent contact versus right, but still. He can see his speed and he can steal. I feel like this is good for everybody on their team. Next is Trevor Rogers of the Miami Marlins, who is still technically a rookie. He debuted last year towards the end, I want to say July or August, and he didn't do that great. 
but this year he has a sub two ERA so far. He's one of the top three pitchers I want to say in the National League as of right now. He's doing very well, and he's only a 72 overall. So I feel like next roster, but he's definitely going to get a buff at least to a silver. I mean, there's no way he's going to stay 72. Sub two ERA, top three, top five pitcher in the NL. NL. I mean, no way he sticks for this long. He's going to get buff no matter what. So I would buy him just maybe even to just make a couple stuffs, not even that you need him. All right, so sticking with the Baltimore Orioles, I have Cedric Mullins here, strictly because you could, I don't think he's gonna get a big overall boost. He is batting 320 on the season with an OPS of 902, which is pretty good. It's it's pretty, it's very good. And, um, but when, uh, it's, it's been going down. He was batting the 400s like a week and a half ago, and it's just, it's going down. So if he can get some sense of consistency, I'd say it's a safe bet, bet to buy him. He's only 330 stubs, at least for me. And, I mean, you could probably make it a good amount of stubs, assuming he gets... I'm going to say he's probably near a silver next roster update. That's just me. He was already uh, above three uh, overall from the last update. He was a 67 coming through the game. And now he's a 70. So he already got buffed a little bit, and I feel like next roster update, he'll be buffed up again. So I feel like you can make a decent amount of stubs just from buying a Petranger now and selling him next roster update, which is like a week and a half, I think. It's every two weeks. I don't remember when last one was, so yeah. Next, I have Nick Madrigal from the White Sox. He was the fourth overall pick in the 2018 draft. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure of that. And he's been doing really well this year. As you can see, his contact is pretty good in this game. So is his fielding this season. But this year, in real life, through 89 at bats, he's a 315 batting average with 10 RBIs. And OPS is 300, 365. His OPS is a 675, which is all right, but it's not bad. He still has yet to get his first home run, okay? He has 19 RBI's career, but no home run. He debuted last year. But this guy has been hitting really well. I don't know how much he's going to get lost in the next roster. Okay? Even if he does, he might even... I don't know if he will. He's not an everyday player, which I don't know why he's batting over 300. And he has a decent glove. But I guess the White Sox have too many guys at this point. Yeah, and he's been pretty overshadowed by everybody on the White Sox. So I feel like he's an under-the-radar guy. So I would buy this guy just to gain stubs, or if you need a player on your team at second base, or does he play the positions? No, he does not. I yeah, just gonna look at the stats. It's not too bad. Sorry, right. I feel like it'll get better. The contact's pretty good. The power is what's the problem. Doesn't have the same home run. Fun fact though, when I was recording this the first time around, which I did on May 1st, I, the reason I didn't like, upload those is because like three people got hurt the day I was recording of it, like Dustin May, Otani's. Start got pushed back and I had Jordan Hicks who also got hurt that day so I was just like I had to scrap it. Everybody got hurt. I was like wow. But um this card was only a thousand one thousand five hundred stubs. I should have bought it. I could have made a lot of stubs. Killing myself today. Alright so your Mercedes is kind of confusing me a little bit because I know they had this card and he's been on a hot streak the whole year. I think we all know that if you've been following baseball MLB this year so far. He's been on a hot streak. And he's only a 73 overall. I know there's this card, Tops Now, which is from the beginning of April, let's be honest. It's 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 kind of old, I guess you could say, but like, I feel like he should be a higher overall. That's just me. I know Yasmani Grindal, whatever. I feel like, first off, Mercedes doing better, I thought, this year. Might as well look it up. But um, I don't know why he's still a 73. I, I, I really don't know why. Is his fielding really that bad? I mean, obviously. But I feel like he's hitting better than what his attributes actually show. So I'm thinking next roster update, if he keeps it consistent with the stats and hitting well and playing well, he'll definitely get into the silvers, I feel. I mean, I don't know why they're so hesitant to buff him. I know it's his first year. And I also thought he was 28. No, he's 22. I, uh, yeah, I feel like he could get buffed a little bit. He can make a few stubs. Maybe not much, but some. He's just, I thought I'd include him just for fun. I don't know. He's such a question mark to me. So for Cabrian Hayes, uh, I thought I'd include him. I don't know if it'll be this or Oscar update, but I had like, I guess a couple theory. He's injured right now. I think he, I don't want to say fractured stuff, but he did something to his thumb where he had to put, get put on the 10 day IL. He played like two games this year and he had a decent end of last year because he was called up at the end of last year by the Pirates. And he didn't play bad. He actually played pretty good. Coming into the year, he was like the favorite for the AL or NL rookie of the year. So people are high on him, but he's injured, and he's pretty cheap right now. So I'm thinking if he comes back and he's really hot and he's doing playing really well, he's he's gonna shoot up like how standard. It. Like three days ago, I want to say he was like 3,000 spells. Now he's up there in the 7,000 or 6,000 or 7,000. But I feel like something may happen with him 
I, I have a feeling for some reason that it may shoot up really if he starts to play really well. You can say that about any player, yeah, I know, but I really feel like if he can come back, because he didn't play well when he first started. Or he did play well, sorry. He played well when he first came in the first two games of the season. So I would, I'm just gonna, I'd, I'd, bleh, I would tie him for an investment. <laughs> Just to maybe gain some stubs, that's all. Sixto Sanchez is another one of those guys where he's injured currently. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he hasn't pitched at all yet this year. I don't know if he pitched, pitched in spring training. I wasn't following the Marlins. But uh, he's still a rookie. He only pitched 39 innings last year. And to not be a rookie anymore, you, you need to pitch more than 50 innings. So he's still considered a rookie. He had a 3.46 ERA last year. Started every game he pitched in. And he played really well. And I feel like when he comes back from injury, I don't know what his injury is. I do apologize. Um, I feel like he might shoot up from a 75. That's just me. I feel like he can maybe go into gold by the end of the year. I, that's just an investment. I know not a lot of us may be playing by like the end of the year, but I feel like for fun, maybe. Or maybe he comes back and he's dominant and he just shoots up and makes it, makes, gets you a bunch of stubs. Who knows? I just thought I'd include him for fun. So next on here, I have Jonathan Loisega. And... And the reason I have him here is he's 73, and I know not many of you may know him. He's kind of an under the radar guy, but so far this year he's pitched 18.1 innings, and he only has a .98 ERA. I, that's pretty decent. And if he keeps it consistent for at least the next week and a half, he's going to get a, a significant boost in um, the roster update, without a doubt. So he's only 115 stubs right now, so I would buy that. I understand if he doesn't get to the goal, like for a reliever, it's not going to be that much of a ball. But I feel like he could get a significant bump if he keeps it playing like this. Because he's pitching on the level of... I, I, he's just pitching really good. I don't want to compare that anything because his history isn't the best pitching-wise. But I really feel like he'll get a significant boost if he keeps this going. Yeah. <laughs>